Tonight at 6, a major announcement is scheduled for the Carrier Dome. We have the latest details. And Earth Fest was celebrated in Thornton Park over the weekend. What planet-saving initiatives people rallied for? From winter to spring, flowers have started to bloom on the SU campus. I'll have your full five-day forecast coming up. Citrus TV News starts right now. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. The bombing of Pan Am Flight 103 left more than 250 people dead, including 35 Syracuse students returning from semesters abroad in December 1988. I'm Brooke Glatz. And I'm Alex Amico. The family of convicted bomber Abdel Basset al Megrahi is attempting to clear his name tonight. al Megrahi was convicted of blowing up Flight 103 above Lockerbie, Scotland in 2001. He died of cancer in prison in 2012 while still trying to clear his name. His family is asking the Scottish Criminal Cases Review Commission to hand the case to an appeals court. Al-Megrahi lost one appeal prior to his death. New at 6, a major announcement is planned tomorrow in the Carrier Dome. Dome manager Pete Sala and the vice president of concert promotion company Bowery Pre Presence are leading the press conference. We will have live updates starting at 9 a.m. on Twitter at Citrus TV News. Well, it's a beautiful sunny day here on the SU campus, and the Citrus Cam was outside where there were bright blue skies. But Alex, will this sunshine stick around? Citrus TV weather anchor Rebecca Castor is here to tell us when we'll need to get out on our umbrellas. Thanks, Alex and Brooke. I definitely enjoyed today's sunshine as well. Right now we're at 69 degrees and our low tonight's gonna be at about 50 degrees and we have a 30% chance of rain going into the evening. And taking a look at our Doppler radar, we'll see we're pretty clear tonight, but then those showers are gonna come our way tomorrow and we're gonna have quite a bit of them. I'll tell you when we'll see sunshine again this week and my full weather forecast coming up. Thanks, Rebecca. EarthFest was held yesterday in Thorndon Park, connecting Syracuse University, SUNY ESF, and local neighborhoods surrounding the campuses. The event celebrates the ways in which we can keep our area envir environmentally sound. Citrus TV reporter Sabrina Maggiore has the full story. SU's Students of Sustainability and other community-wide organizations held this year's EarthFest at Thorndon Park Amphitheater. It's kind of to celebrate Earth Day and also bring together people who are conscious about environmental issues. The day featured local musicians, artists and vendors, environmental organizations and prominent speakers for a free sustainability themed music and arts festival. University students and community members alike attended the event. Also in attendance was Green Party mayoral candidate Howie Hawkins and everyone's favorite orange, Otto. All the environmental community groups are here so there's a lot of mixing people getting information and learning. I mean, that's what Earth Day is all about. Attendees were encouraged to visit tables and ask questions in order to increase sustainability and environmental consciousness. Yeah, I'm definitely learning more about uh, the environmental standpoint, the perspective of that, rather than like the typical economic and just normal political perspective that we normally are fed in school. Organizers of the event say that spreading this knowledge is what it's all about. So I hope people just change something in their daily lives, whether it's just recycling or maybe eating less meat, anything that's just more sustainable for Earth and just keeping it up with their daily life and understanding that it's so important for the environment. There's so much that's so important, but I think the sort of overarching theme is you look around and all of these people really do care about our planet and about other people and the fact that we're all here together and we're all doing something to show that. I think that's really important for people to remember. Sabrina Majore, Citrus TV News. Course evaluations begin today and are open through May 10th. Most departments use the online system to collect student ratings. Otherwise, students will receive paper forms. University statistics show 75% of instructors say they use student feedback to revise their courses. State legislators are looking to reopen the debate of alcohol in movies. Governor Cuomo will introduce a law allowing those of legal age to purchase alcoholic beverages at movies rated PG-13 and up. State law currently allows theaters with restaurants attached to serve beverages, but this applies to fewer than 10 theaters in the state. New York State's public university system has a new chancellor. The SUNY Board of Trustees unanimously approved Christina Johnson as the new chancellor. Johnson is an engineer who served as the undersecretary in the Department of Energy during the Obama administration. She will assume her position in September. 
and the annual Relay for Life took place on Friday. The event lasted all night and featured live music, games, and food. Participants in the Relay helped to raise money for cancer treatment and research. Citrus TV reporter Taylor Lang was at the event. While the Manly Field House turf was still green Friday night, the rest of the place was all purple. Thousands of SU students and Syracuse residents settled into the Field House for the 12-hour Relay for Life event. The Luminaria ceremony honored those who have been lost because of cancer and the families and friends they've left behind. We missed you in July. Through red, white, and blue, through cookouts, fireworks, and parades, all we wanted was to hug you. Those who are fighting or have beaten cancer walked the first lap of the night, and upstate medical caregivers walked the second. Everyone else joined in on the third lap and took turns walking the whole night to raise money. Upstate has a motto that says, knowing changes everything. Knowing is a start, but doing is what changes. I'm Taylor Lang, Citrus TV News. The final total was just under $85,000. The board says they are already planning for next year. New details in the campus framework. Chief Facilities Officer Pete Salas had an update on construction plans earlier today. His email states that an old brick sewer under Waverly Avenue will be replaced after commencement. Part of the street will be closed between May 15th and August 11th. There's an information session with more details on Thursday at 4 p.m. in the Herg. Coming up, the U.S. Secretary of Defense is in the Middle East as President Trump considers sending more troops to the region. And Talking Points host Mike Riccardi joins us with an update on the French election. <clears throat> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning? Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. Okay, but remember, it's not what you say, it's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Got a quarter? This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. You're watching Citrus TV News with Alex Amico, Brooke Glatz, and Rebecca Castor with weather. Citrus TV News continues now. U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis made an unannounced appearance in Afghanistan earlier today. The visit came in the middle of the Trump administration's conflict about whether to send in more troops. The U.S. currently has about 9,800 troops in Afghanistan. The visit also comes two weeks after the U.S. dropped the first ever Moab on, it, on an IS complex in the country. The bombing was ordered by General John Nicholson. We were sending a very clear message to ISIS, uh, not only to ISIS here in Afghanistan, but also ISIS Maine, that they, if they come here to Afghanistan, they will be destroyed. In keeping with the Secretary's intent, they will be annihilated. And so this uh, continuing pressure we're putting on ISIS is achieving that effect, and we're going to keep it up. 
voters have rejected France's main political parties, opting instead for two outsiders in a runoff for the French presidency. Emmanuel, Emmanuel Macron and Marie Le Pen are expected to advance to the second round of voting. Left-wing candidate Jean-Luc Mélenchon and Republican Francois Fillon were effectively tied for third. Citrus TV Talking Points moderator Mike Riccardi joins us now with how the vote will affect the country and the European community. Emmanuel Macron and Marine Le Pen will face off in a runoff election on May 7th. Macron stunned the political establishment by leading the first round in voting. The 39-year-old investment banker had never previously held public office, but managed to woo over voters with his centrist politics. Meanwhile, Le Pen won over young voters while running on a far-right populist platform. This was the first time in French history where neither candidate hailed from a major political party. Many voters say they will vote for Macron in the second round to prevent Le Pen from coming into power. I'm going to do like everyone, you know, I'm going to vote Macron because uh, I'm forced to vote Macron. Uh, I'm not, you know, pleased to do it, but I think as a French citizen, it's our, it's our duty to avoid a uh, far right becoming to power because last time the far right was in power in France, we saw what happened uh, and it was pretty, pretty tragic. The eyes of the EU and the world will look to France to see how the nation shapes the future of European politics. Brooke and Alex, back to you. Thanks, Mike. Workers in New Orleans removed the first of four Confederate statues earlier today. The new re now removed Liberty Place Monument remembers white supremacists who were tried to topple the biracial government after the Civil War. The city council voted 6-1 to one in 2015 to remove the statues, but the process was delayed due to legal battles. The removal took place around 5.30 this morning in order to avoid rowdy protesters. Those in opposition believe the statues are an important part of history. Supporters of the removal believe the statues represent racism and white supremacy. Obviously, the mayor that we voted into office was very much for it. Hence, it's coming down. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. Warmer temperatures across central New York. Right now, Syracuse is at 69 degrees, and we even have some cities in central New York hitting the 70s. Binghamton's at 72, and Myers hitting 76 degrees. Taking a look at our Doppler radar, we'll see we're pretty clear tonight as of rain, but we'll have quite a bit of rain coming our way tomorrow, starting as early as 8 a.m. Also, tomorrow we'll have a high of 61 degrees, and those showers will be on and off starting in the morning and going into the afternoon, taking a break in late afternoon, then coming back again in the evening. We're also going to have very strong winds tomorrow, so you're going to, even though it's going to be raining, you're going to want to have that rain jacket on instead of that umbrella just because the strong winds are going to make that umbrella really hard to hold. And then this week's humidity, we're going to see a spike in humidity tomorrow as we have that rain coming in. And also we're going to see high humidity throughout the week. So that's going to keep the air wet. And it's also going to make um, temperatures feel just a little bit warmer than they are. And then with this weekend, with all of the end of the year activities on campus, we do have a very high rain chance, unfortunately, with about 60% chance on Friday and 30% on Saturday, 80% on Sunday. Friday and Saturday, we're going to have those showers in the morning. So hopefully those showers will clear up by the events in the afternoon, and then we're going to see some thunderstorms roll in on Sunday. Taking a look at our five-day forecast, we do have some sunshine in there. Wednesday and Thursday are the days to look forward to. With On Thursday, we have a high of 79 degrees, and then those showers will come in again this weekend with a 60% chance on Friday and highs in the 70s. So guys, unfortunately, with all the fun events this weekend, the rain chance is look, not looking too good, but hopefully the forecast will change and we will be able to see some sunshine come out this weekend for Mayfest and Block Party. All right, speaking of Mayfest, Rebecca, I know you're saying that you're predicting some rain on that Friday, but is it going to be just in the morning or will, be, will we be seeing it throughout the entire day? Right now on Friday, it's looking like it's going to be just in the morning, so hopefully those rain clouds will clear up by about noon, 1 o'clock, so we'll see some sunshine for the events. And another event coming up in a couple weeks, uh, a tamer event, but a no less important event is graduation. Um, last year it snowed on graduation. Do you think we're going to see that this year? I would be surprised if we saw snow on graduation this year. We have warmer temperatures coming in, hitting the 70s later this week. So hopefully those warmer temperatures will stick around. All right, All right thanks, thank Rebecca. You. Coming up after the break, the Disability Cultural Center hosts Crippling the Comic-Con. And coming up later in sports, David Edelstein tells us about a senior day thriller in the Carrier Dome. Stay tuned. Your daughter just had her first breakup. 
Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? <laughs> B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Well, Thomas, you've got prediabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Hey, look, it's those guys. Are you good to try? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be. Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, let's crawl. Hey yo, let's crawl. Hey, let's crawl. Hey yo, let's crawl. If you see news happening on campus, in Syracuse, or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177, or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. Welcome back to Citrus TV News. Not all heroes wear capes. Rashika Jaipuriyar tells, tells us about this year's Cripping the Comic Con, a day-long event that embraced all kinds of disabilities. On Saturday, the Disability Cultural Center hosted Cripping the Comic Con, an annual symposium that raises awareness about disability as a symbol of identity and pride. Graduate student Jason Friedman, whose organization co-sponsored the event, said Cripping the Comic Con was all about creating a space for acceptance and non-judgment. You can just come as you are. I didn't shower this morning because I know I'm coming to a crip space, and it doesn't matter if I have bedhead. Uh, I can show up however I want to because I'm not going to be judged. And how many places on a university campus can you go to and not have to think twice about being judged? This year's summit focused on representation of disability in comic books and popular culture. Events included a panel of comic artists, a variety of workshops, and art exhibitions. Diane Weiner, the director of the Disability Cultural Center, said she does it all for the students. It's very important that people um, have an opportunity, whomever they are, um, including those of us with disability identities, that all of us have a place at the table. I think perfectionism is actually difficult and problematic and di dangerous in some ways. Wearing a cape doesn't mean that I'm superhuman. It means that I'm feeling shiny. UK native Dan White created his own comic after his daughter Emily got her first wheelchair and couldn't find any relevant media icons. It's 2017 and it still really hasn't happened. And we can't have another generation of Emily's age, she's 10, growing up fighting the same battle just to purely be seen as a positive, strong character in the media. Rashika J. Priyar, Citrus TV News. Bill O'Reilly is out at Fox News, but No Spin Zone will continue tonight on his website's podcast. He's been doing the podcast for years, but this will be O'Reilly's first public comments since he was fired from Fox News after multiple claims of sexual harassment. O'Reilly has denied the allegations. Former NFL star and convicted murderer Aaron Hernandez was laid to rest at a private funeral in Connecticut today. The former Patriots tight end was found hanging from a bedsheet in prison last week. A judge has ordered all evidence connected to Hernandez's death preserved. His family may sue for negligence over his prison suicide. Coming up, how did Syracuse men's lacrosse fare on Saturday trying to hold on to its number one ranking? Who came out on top in SU women's lacrosse's last game before the playoffs? And what exactly did Syracuse football spring showcase show? I'll tell you all the answers in just two minutes.
You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Mm -hmm. Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Fancy pants peanut butter? A big screen television? You haven't even brought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. Here we go. We're gonna go out there in the rain. We're gonna get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, look at the rain. Oh, look at the rain. Okay, quick. Oh, yeah, yes. So much fun. Yeah, And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. East men's lacrosse is still number one. Good evening, I'm David Edelstein. The Orange tried to defend its top spot against unranked Binghamton on Saturday. It was senior day in the Carrier Dome and the SU players' families were on the field and that energy transferred to the team throughout this game. Here we have Ryan Simmons who puts that ball to the ground and it finds its way to the back of the net, putting Syracuse up first one to zero. But then Jamie Tremboli, he gets pushed a little bit, but he throws it into the back of the net as well. Syracuse now up by two, three to one. But then Binghamton doesn't only want it to be Syracuse's show, even though they're on the road. Joe Licata puts that in the goal on a man up goal. Binghamton is now down four to two. But then Binghamton tied it up at four before Tom Moore, he gave Binghamton the lead five to four. Syracuse is now down by one, but Jordan Evans here ties it up at seven with his 15th goal of the season right before the end of the third quarter. And then Jamie Tramboli once again puts Syracuse up as he passes by here. Nine to seven and a little bit of a dance and high fives. It's the last game before Syracuse heads to the playoffs. The team comes to the field to celebrate the win. If you placed a bet this weekend that sports scores would be 8-9, to nine, well, you're probably pretty happy right now, but the SU women's lacrosse team is not feeling the same way. The seventh-ranked Orange faced the opposite fate of the men's team falling to Louisville on Saturday. Natalie Wallen had a hat trick with a career-high three goals in the game. She was so close to being the dark horse for the Orange. She scored three times in a row in the second half, the last two with under three minutes in the game to bring the game within one score, but... The effort fell short of earning a sixth victory in a row for SU. And with the sweet smells of spring comes a growing feeling that football season is just a bit closer. Syracuse football played its final spring practice game of the year, the 2017 Spring Showcase. First string players played on Team Orange and defeated the second string players on Team White 14-0. Safety Antoine Cordy returned a first quarter interception for a 40-yard touchdown to score Team Orange's first six points along with an extra point kick. And later, Eric Dungey threw a 35-yard touchdown pass to Devin Butler in the fourth quarter for the second seven. Khadija Sellers broke a Syracuse University record. Her track, track and field 400-meter dash took just 52.88 seconds from start to finish. That's under half a second shorter than previous record set by Sandy McFarland in 1996. And after a 2-7 start to the season, the Syracuse Chiefs have now won six in a row. The Chiefs swept the three-game series against the Norfolk Tides yesterday 8-2, putting Syracuse's record over 500 for the first time this season. Eight players combined for 11 hits for the Chiefs. The Chiefs are now tied for third place in the division, and they're playing there. Now, Brooke and Alex, uh, going back to that um, lacrosse game 
Uh, it, they're going into the playoffs now against national defending champions North Carolina. Now that's going to be that's a tall order, but Syracuse is ranked number one in the country. How do you feel about their chances? You know, they're ranked number one in the country, like you just said. Syracuse has not really dominated teams, but they've been able to get those close wins, and that's what you need to be able to do in tournaments like this where all teams are great. All right, we'll see what happens, Dave. After the break, we'll take one last look at your weather. Stay tuned. <laughs> So, same time next week? Well, of course. I already knew that I was going to go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely want to major in political science, become the mayor or something, make the situation better for other people. My name is Justin, and I am your dividend. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. This is a serious problem but one we can solve. Visit feedingamerica.org to help. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. Maybe he's really focused. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. Taking another look at our weather for tomorrow, we have quite a bit of rain showers coming our way at about 9 a.m. We'll see temperatures at 49 degrees and then an increase to the 50s throughout the afternoon. We'll have about a fourth of an inch of rain to fall in all, so definitely be sure to have your umbrella on you tomorrow. McDonald's employees are getting a new look. The fast food chain is paired up with a designer to unveil new uniforms this month. However, people sl are slamming the lack of color in the black and gray outfits. The company says the goal was comfort and contemporary professionalism and that over 70% of employees like them. Well, that's all the time we have for our show today. This is actually Alex and my last show. So as tradition, we just wanted to thank everybody so much. Thank you, Brendan, our producer, who has helped us and guided us through this semester. Thank you to our director, Meg Mystery, and thank you to all of our friends who have been here with us for the past four years making Citrus our home. I'm gonna cry now. <laughs> it's been a really great four years. Uh, we both started at Citrus our freshman year, and it's been really awesome ever since, uh, having a newsroom that became a home and friends that became a family. And uh, this last year, this last semester particularly, it's been really nice to anchor next to next to one of my uh, first friends I ever made at Syracuse. Brooke was my next door neighbor in Sadler Hall freshman year. Uh, we always sort of wanted to anchor together and this last, uh, this last semester we finally got the chance. It's, it's really been a dream come true. I have to say some of my favorite memories from Citrus are the ridiculous bloopers that we have of Alex dancing all of the time <laughs> while we played funny music for him. I have countless memories with every single person here and I just really couldn't pick one that I think sums up my experience best, so. I'm kind of impressed that I got on the blooper reel uh, two years in a row, both years for dancing to Ice Ice Baby, so at least I'm consistent. <laughs> I'm a bad dancer, but I'm a consistently bad dancer. Um, I'd also like to take a minute and thank Rebecca Castor for planning an amazing banquet this past year. She was our Associate General Manager. She took up or after me, so I couldn't be more proud of her. And thank you to Nick, Ross, and Tim Holtman and the rest of the exec team who just really have made this year so special for us and helped to send off the seniors in the best way possible. So, for the last time, <laughs> take it away. For the last time, for News 24-7, follow us on Twitter at Citrus TV News and visit our website, CitrusTV.com. I'm Alex Amico. And I'm Brooke Glatz. Have a great night, Syracuse.